Spirit Damage is one part of Deadlock's trinity of damage types. This video will demonstrate the major factors that make up those beautiful purple numbers. Or light blue numbers. This is the much asked for Dead Man's Guide to Spirit Damage. Base Spirit Damage is this number here. It's the amount of spirit damage your item or ability says it will deal. Base spirit damage can be increased based on spirit power and ability point upgrades. However, not all items and abilities scale with spirit power. You can see if spirit power will increase your damage with the presence of this star and arrow icon. Base spirit damage is usually a flat number, although there are many instances where this is false. Sometimes, base spirit damage is based on current or maximum health. There are instances where it is based on weapon damage or even base bullet damage. Kinetic Carbine and Assassinate can increase their base spirit damage with headshots, while Ground Stomp factors in Distance Fallen and Sticky Bomb factors in a stackable damage bonus. And although not stated anywhere, some sources of spirit damage, such as Tesla Bullets, factor in weapon falloff. This isn't a comprehensive list, but you can see that not all items and abilities calculate their base spirit damage in the same way. Given that base spirit damage can be increased with spirit power, we should go over how that works. Spirit power is a stat found on many items in the shop. The shop bonus for spirit items, the casting bridge buff, golden statues, Kelvin's 2 at T3, Grey Talons 4 when you get a kill, and when you level up your character from farming souls. Spirit power also comes in two forms, flat and percentage. The only source currently of percentage spirit power is boundless spirit. Total spirit power is flat spirit power multiplied by percentage spirit power. In this example, we have boundless spirit, and we are affected by spirit sap. This gives us a total of 49 spirit power. This is because our flat spirit power totals 43, 35 from boundless spirit, minus 12 from spirit sap, and 20 from the shot bonus. And our percentage spirit power is 13%, all of which is from boundless spirit. This will give us a total spirit power of 48.59. I should also say that the maths in the center of the screen is just a visualization, and the proper calculations will be shown at the bottom of the screen. Anyway, back to the total spirit power of 48.59, which rounds to 49 on the display. I should also say, if you have any conditional spirit power from items like Ethereal Shift, the increase in base spirit damage won't be shown on the display. Although spirit power increases base spirit damage, it isn't usually a one-to-one -one relationship. This is where spirit scaling comes in. Spirit scaling is this multiplier here. We can see that Splatter has a spirit scaling of 1.8. If we have 27 spirit power, 18 from improved spirit and 9 from the shot bonus, Splatter's base spirit damage is increased by 48. This is because the 27 spirit power is multiplied by the 1.8 spirit scaling, resulting in a base spirit damage increase of 48.6. Now this spirit scaling of 1.8 is actually rounded. The amazing folks that edit the Deadlock wiki have datamined the real spirit scalings, and in the case of Splatter, 1.77 is the real spirit scaling. Going forward, I'll use the datamined spirit scalings on the wiki. Although the example I used increased base spirit damage by a flat amount, there are instances where this won't be true. In the case of Mercurial Magnum, Spirit Scaling will increase the multiplier of base bullet damage directly. Like I've said earlier, not all items and abilities have Spirit Scaling. This star and arrow icon will show if Spirit Scaling is present. If your Spirit Power is negative due to being affected by Spirit Sap or Silence Wave, your damage will be reduced. Given we understand the main elements that make up base spirit damage, let's do a quick example with Wraith. Wraith's 1 has a base spirit damage of 70. I don't miss. With the T2 upgrade, this base spirit damage is increased by 50 to 120. 
Divining Boundless Spirit will increase our base spirit damage to 172. Let's break this down. Boundless Spirit provides 35 flat spirit power and 13% spirit power. The shot bonus also provides 20 flat spirit power. Doing the maths, our total spirit power is 62.15. Wraith's 1 has a spirit scaling of 0.837. This will multiply the total spirit power of 62.15. This results in base spirit damage being increased by 52. Adding this 52 to the 70 of Wraith's 1 and the 50 of the T2 upgrade, this results in a base spirit damage of 172. Let's move on to something a bit simpler, additive amplifiers. They are a type of damage amplification that affects the outgoing damage of a player. The damage amplification of these items and abilities are considered to be additive amplifiers. Let's run through a quick example using Holidays 1 at T2, which has a base spirit damage of 180. Catch! Inhibitor is an additive amplifier of minus 35%. If the enemy inflicts us with Inhibitor, our damage is reduced from 180 to 117. Mathematically, it looks like this, the Additive Amplifier multiplying our base spirit damage. Additive Amplifiers, as their name suggests, add up together, so if Shiv has a full Rage Bar and was affected by Inhibitor, the resulting Additive Amplifier would be minus 10%, because that's the sum of 25% and minus 35%. When the total additive amplifier is less than or equal to minus 100%, spirit damage is not reduced at all. This is possible if you are cheating death and are affected by inhibitor or bebops too. If we are to build up our equation, let's say that base spirit damage multiplied by additive amplifiers equals spirit damage. I should also state that some, but not all abilities will multiply the total additive amp value by their spirit scaling. This isn't stated anywhere, and seems rather random. Here's an example from a previous video. If we are affected by Inhibitor, the difference in damage drops to 35. A very strange value. If we were to simply multiply Holidays 3 with Inhibitor, the damage difference would be 39, which is different from the observed value of 35. Now for whatever reason, the total value of additive amplifiers are multiplied by the spirit scaling of Holidays 3 which is 1.2. This gives us the correct damage difference of 34.8, which rounds to 35 in my example. Abilities that multiply the total additive amp value by their spirit scaling include, but is not limited to, Holidays 3, Infernus's 4, and Kelvin's 1. Staying on topic with damage amplifiers, let's talk about multiplicative amplifiers. They affect the incoming damage of a player, and are present on Moen Krill's 1 at T3, McGuinness's 3 at T1, and Infernus's 1. With this setup on Moen Krill, their 1 will have a base spirit damage of 100. We will never yield. When their 15% multiplicative amplifier is applied on the enemy, we deal 115 spirit damage. Mathematically, it looks like this, with the 100.12 base spirit damage being multiplied by the 15% multiplicative amplifier, which gives us 115.138, which we saw as 115 in-game. Putting multiplicative amplifiers into our spirit damage equation will result in this. Base spirit damage multiplied by additive amplifiers and multiplicative amplifiers. Resistances are quite well documented, but let's go over how Spirit Resist works anyway. Buying Spirit Resilience gives us 30% Spirit Resist. Buying Escalating Exposure will give an extra 20% Spirit Resist. However, as you can see, our Spirit Resist is 44%, not 50%. This is because Resists stack multiplicatively, not additively. If Resists were additive, they would look like this. Very simple. However, multiplicative resists are a little more complicated mathematically. Spirit Resist Shred works identically. Shredding the dummy's spirit resist by 18% with crippling headshot and a further 7% with spirit shredder bullets will reduce the dummy's spirit resist by 24%.
If Spirit Resist Shred was additive, we would have expected the dummy Spirit Resist to be minus 25%. However, Spirit Resist Shred, much like Spirit Resist, is multiplicative. So 18% and 7% will multiply to 23.74% Spirit Resist Shred, which was rounded to minus 24% on the display in-game. The final Spirit Resist is simply the total Spirit Resist subtract the total Spirit Resist Shred. So if the dummy has 44% Spirit Resist from Spirit Resilience and Escalating Exposure, and we shred the dummy Spirit Resist by 23.74 using Crippling Headshot and Spirit Shredder Bullets, the dummy's final Spirit Resist is 20.26%. This is displayed as 20% in-game. Let's run a damage calculation using this 20.26% Spirit Resist with Yamato's 1 at T3, which has a base Spirit Damage of 360. 360 multiplied by the 20.26% spirit resist results in 287 damage against the dummy. Let's try to put this new information into our equation. All sources of spirit resist are multiplied together, and all sources of spirit resist shred are multiplied together. Our final spirit resist is spirit resist subtract spirit resist shred. This is the final value that is then put into our spirit damage equation. Silencer and Invernus's 3 at T1 will reduce the target's spirit damage by 25%. It is as simple as it seems. Grey Talon's 1 has a base spirit damage of 155. There you are. When he is affected by Invernus's 3, his spirit damage will be reduced by 25%. This means that he will deal 116 damage. The hunter strikes. If Infernus by Silencer, our spirit damage will be reduced by another 25%. This means that our damage will be reduced by a total of 50%. Therefore, we will deal 77 damage. This shows that sources of spirit damage reduction stack additively. Now you might ask, what about Spellbreaker? It also reduces spirit damage by a percentage amount. However, it functions differently from Silencer and Infernus's 3. Spellbreaker reduces the user's incoming spirit damage by 75%. This is in contrast to Silencer and Infernus's 3 which reduce a target's outgoing spirit damage by 25%. This means they will be separate multipliers. Using Yamato's 1 at T3, which has a base spirit damage of 360, we can demonstrate this. When Yamato is affected by Infernus's 1 and Silencer, her spirit damage will be reduced by 50%, resulting in 180 damage. If the dummy buys Spellbreaker, two things will happen. First of all, his spirit resist is increased by 25%. Second of all, his incoming spirit damage is reduced by 75%. Accounting for these two factors in the maths will result in Yamato dealing 33 damage. Let's put this information about spirit damage percent into our equation. Sources of outgoing spirit damage will add together and form their own multiplier while Spellbreaker, currently the only source of incoming spirit damage, will also form its own multiplier. Spirit Amp, which is currently only available on Escalating Exposure, doesn't actually increase spirit damage. You can see this as when you deal spirit damage while spirit tab is on the enemy, a second damage instance is shown on the damage display, and the damage dealt by Escalating Exposure is shown as a separate entry in the damage breakdown. Instance amplifiers, the damage amplification of these abilities, and Arctic Glass also exhibit the same behavior of showing a second damage instance and being a separate entry in the damage breakdown. It's for this reason that I won't include them in our damage equation. I should also state that not all sources of spirit damage can be increased by all stats. For example, Quicksilver Reload's damage can't be increased by additive amps or outgoing spirit damage. Let's quickly go through the equation for spirit damage. First of all, is base spirit damage. 
It's usually the number displayed on abilities and items and includes any damage from spirit power and ability upgrades. This is then multiplied by additive amplifiers, which is the damage amplification of these items and abilities. This is then multiplied by multiplicative amplifiers, which is the damage amplification of these abilities. This is then multiplied by enemy spirit resist. This is then multiplied by your outgoing spirit damage, which can only be found on Silencer and in Furnaces 3 at T1. And finally, this is multiplied by the enemy's incoming spirit damage, which can only be found on Spellbreaker. Let's do a final example going through most of the stats. Yamato's 1 has a base spirit damage of 160. With the T3 upgrade, this base spirit damage is increased to 360. If we buy Boundless Spirit, base spirit damage is increased to 476. This is because Boundless Spirit provides 35 spirit power and the shop bonus provides another 20. Boundless Spirit increases spirit power by 13%, which gives us a final spirit power of 62.15. This spirit power is multiplied by the spirit scaling of Yamato's 1, which is 1.86. This increases base spirit damage by 155, which gives us a total base spirit damage of 475.599, rounded to 476 on the display. If Yamato is affected by Inhibitor, which is an additive amplifier of minus 35%, this will reduce the damage of Yamato's 1 to 309. If we are affected by Infernus's 3 at T1, this will reduce our outgoing spirit damage by 25%, reducing our damage to 231. Spellbreaker will provide 25 Spirit Resist for the dummy. This reduces damage to 173. Spellbreaker, when it activates, will reduce the incoming Spirit Damage by 75%. This will reduce damage to 43. This example doesn't involve a multiplicative amplifier because Yamato cannot access one. And that's how most sources of spirit damage are calculated. Now I'm aware that the idea of base spirit damage is a bit of an oversimplification compared to how things are calculated currently, but I think it's better because as an umbrella term it encompasses sources of spirit damage that aren't flat numbers and don't have spirit scaling. I also have two announcements to make. The first is related to one of my mates who helped me out with my videos. He recently released his game called To The Top and I think it's perfect for deadlock players. Here's my favourite review that I translated using Google. A good, kind game. While your friend falls a hundred times, there is time to come up with a new amazing word that would accurately describe him. Deadlock players really are no different as while their teammate dies a hundred times, there is time to come up with an unbelievably creative and original insult that would accurately describe them. Two you went two one. and six in lane. No one fucking cares. Uh, you're either a uh, you're a uh, shiv. Are you duoed with him? Obviously he's doing with me, he's my boyfriend. Like I said, perfect for deadlock players. This co-op precision platformer is available on Steam. It has a friend pass and a demo version for you lot to try out. For my second announcement, expect at most one or two more deadlock videos from me. This is because I haven't been playing deadlock much. It's not because I think deadlock is bad, but rather I've learned that I dislike the pace of MOBAs in general. In particular, I dislike the long respawn times and killing NPCs. I also want to grow and diversify the channel. Ideally, I'd want to hop from game to game, but we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching, and please stick around for more Mathematical Yap.